Guten Morgen. Good morning. How is everyone? Yeah? Good. Good. So who, who wants to see a couple demos this morning? Yeah, a little bit of technology? Great. Great. Well, I'm going to start with some slides. How about that? <laughs> I always start my keynotes um, with a slide that looks something like this. And, and there's a reason for that. The reason is that in the Cloud Foundry community, we're extremely focused on developer experience. I shorthand that as DX. And think about the user experience of the applications that are built. But for a developer, their experience working with software that's supposed to support the development life cycle is incredibly important. And Ansi from, from Pivotal, everyone should know this haiku by now, wrote the haiku that describes really what that experience looks like for the Cloud Foundry application runtime. Are there any poets in the room? So Alex and everyone else, I have a challenge for you. Come up with a haiku that covers our container runtime. So, you can send it to me later. I think that'll be a lot of fun. So let's transition um, and, and just talk a little bit about the philosophy that the open source Cloud Foundry community has around what we're doing. We're not a bucket of tools. It's a comprehensive open source platform that allows a lot of room for differentiation for the distributions and the services that use it. But the level of maturity in the open source community that actually builds this software that's shared is, is really high. And so I think about this as, what does it mean to be open source that's enterprise ready? And it really boils down to four things. And we're going to spend time both talking about, as well as showing you, how we're focused on security, deep integration, not just into other platforms, but into the enterprise, scalability, and then again, that great developer experience. And that's across any of the surface area that developers touch. So let's, let's start by talking a bit about the application runtime and some of the things we're doing around security. Within Cloud Foundry, there are a lot, it, it is a platform of microservices that work with each other in order to support that developer experience, in order to um, support the, the upkeep and the telemetry uh, that you need to manage your applications. And one of the things that needed to be done and is complete at this point is that all the communication between those components had to be secured. Now, that's, that's complete at this point. But more interesting, though, is how can a platform actually support the applications themselves that are being pushed into it? How can we provide those applications with credentials, with certificates? Maybe those certificates even auto-rotate for them. So there's a lot of work that's going into that. If I dig deeper, I, just, I like this, my favorite team, the garden team. Um, I want to take a minute to talk about the level of focus they have on, on security. So the Garden team is, is, within the application runtime, one of the lowest levels of the architecture. It's not something that a developer directly interacts with, but it's perhaps one of the most important components of the system because they're focused on being the most secure environment for containers for a multi-tenant application platform. The other thing I'd say is that I love the collaboration that the Cloud Foundry community has with other open source projects. Run C is the library that was donated by Docker to the Open Container Initiative. And what's really interesting is how the Cloud Foundry community dove into that project in order to really make sure that its ability to run containers in a rootless way, right, not, not requiring root, would work and it would work well. So now let's talk about credentials. I mentioned them, mentioned them a moment ago. Um, when you think about what you need to do with credentials, these are credentials of any type, whether you're talking passwords or whether you're talking about certificates, you really need to do four things with them, right? You need to be able to create them. You need to persist them. You need to encrypt them, both in transit as well as in storage. You need to be able to rotate them super easily. Now, CredHub's a project that if you haven't looked into, you should, because it's increasingly becoming a core part of how Cloud Foundry systems are deployed and managed, but also increasingly becoming a key part of how Cloud Foundry can support the application developers' need for certificates and, and credentials management. It exposes uh, creds to operators, the infrastructure itself, and applications. I also like to spend time to, th to just really congratulate the, the way that our open source projects think about and deal with vulnerabilities. 
If you were to try to put together, by using a number of different parts by yourself, a platform that did everything that the Cloud Foundry platform does, you would have an enormous amount of responsibility that you're taking on for your organization. So our open source community handles this for you because we're providing a comprehensive platform. Again, the, the vendors are going to add a lot of value to, but the core platform that's delivered by the open source ecosystem is tracking all of the upstream operating systems, different services that are being supported, all the languages. That includes things like the Node.js framework, the Java uh, Spring community. Anytime there's a vulnerability in any of these projects that are brought together, it's very quickly integrated and kicked out from the open source community. And on average, we're, we're releasing about twice a month, and that velocity actually is, is very variable. Because if there's a critical vulnerability in Ubuntu, which is what our, our stem cells are based on today, in about 48 hours, you can expect to see a new stem cell get released. That's pretty impressive, especially for, for an open source community. Switching topics, let's, let's talk about performance and scale. Um, our application runtime changed architectures, and one of the, one of the ways that it, uh, one of the things it had to do when it was switching to the new architecture was to hit a scaling target for one of the largest environments um, that's a public Cloud Foundry provider. Um, it got to the quarter million application instances mark, and that's great. For me, though, it's much more important to understand and dig into the way that testing was done. This wasn't, this wasn't a test that just said, hey, how many containers can we boot? Right? This was actually, what does it mean to have a platform that's running a quarter million application instances, some of which are unhealthy? And how does it continue to keep the promise that it made to the developers to restart, to monitor the health, to ensure that logging and telemetry data makes it back to you? So this was really important to the entire framework. All of the project teams were impacted in one way or another. And they've all been focused on that performance. Picking on one team, because there's one release that was in February of this year, and I know this is old news because, you know, last week is old news in the tech industry. But just one release as an example, if you focus on that five milliseconds of latency target for the, the Go router, that one release improved over three times. But more importantly, every time that routing project team does a release, they run the same benchmark and release only if they improve or stay the same. Now, I've mentioned a bit about how we bring together a number of different upstreams, but I, I really want to land this point with everyone. When you're talking about the Cloud Foundry collection of platforms, we harvest innovation from throughout the entire open source ecosystem. That includes projects like OCI, where I talked about Run C, and we also collaborate with them. It also includes things like the container networking interface that's happening at CNCF, and I'm sure they have a logo for it that I didn't, uh, didn't put in here. Um, that's key to our container networking project, which is going to allow us, it actually does already today, allow us to make it easy for a developer to let one microservice communicate with another. That includes things like open tracing, and now Kubernetes with the Cloud Foundry container runtime. These are all upstream projects for us. We think of them as, as part of our ecosystem. And then we have the Open Service Broker API, which spun out of Cloud Foundry, and we embraced the other platforms and found ways to let them govern it along with us. So going back to this command line tool, we're going we're to dig into the developer experience a little bit. Um, first, it's kind of in use, right? It's seeing about 200,000 downloads a month. So a lot of people enjoy it. A lot of people know it but there's some things that we can do with it that extend that basic CF push experience. And the plugin model is neat. How many of you have already toyed with CF Local? If you haven't, you should. So CF Local is a project that was started by our lead for the, the Build Packs project in his spare time. And it allows a developer to install this plugin. And now it can work locally on your laptop in a way that behaves like Cloud Foundry. You can push and pull applications out of a live Cloud Foundry environment. You can also have services stubbed out for you, including SSH tunneling back to the Cloud Foundry environment. So you can use the live service. It's really neat. It starts to solve the, some of the problem of 
how do you get a better flow as a developer in your local environment and interact with the larger system? I'm also really happy to say that as of today, it is our newest project at the Cloud Foundry Foundation. It was accepted into incubation. So uh, congratulations to Stephen. And And I highly suggest that if you're looking for a way to get started contributing to the Cloud Foundry community, that's a great project for you to dig into. So go take a look at it. You can check it out on the Cloud Foundry developer mailing list. You'll see some information about it there. All right. Now we're going to start inviting guests up here. <laughs>